If you're new to laser cutter engravers or you're considering buying one, there's a few things you should know. And the first one is that lasers are actually pretty dirty devices. They create a lot of smoke, there's a lot of dust, uh, soot, and you really have to keep that stuff clean. It sticks to things inside the laser, it sticks to the work, it plugs up all the optics and gets them, gets them dirty. And if you let it go for a while, it'll actually kind of bake onto the, onto the optics. So what I wanted to do in this episode is get back to basics with really a beginner's guide to uh, keeping your laser clean and just doing general maintenance, how often you should do things, when you should do it. And uh, with that, uh, let's get going. How's it going everybody? Steve here and welcome back to the shop if you're a regular viewer. If you're new, welcome to the channel and hopefully we can help you get up to speed with your laser work. And by all means, if you're watching videos uh, on any kind of regular basis, be sure to hit that subscribe button. What I wanted to do in this episode is kind of show you the steps that I take to clean my laser. I tend to use a fairly methodical approach and I do it on a, on a consistent basis. Some things I do monthly, some things I do uh, every couple months or twice a year. And I'll kind of walk you through some of what I do and uh, feel free to augment that with your own uh, cleaning regimen, but uh, it's really important that you clean your laser. And one of the obvious reasons is it reduces your maintenance. So you really don't want to have your laser down, especially if you're using it for a business and uh, it, they're expensive to fix. So, you know, the cleaner you can keep it, the less maintenance you'll have to do in the long run. So let's get going. Okay, before we get really rolling here, we need a few things because we have to do some, a bit of disassembly on our laser potentially. We have to clean some lenses and just general cleanup. So we'll start with a set of Allen keys. You're gonna need those if you have to take off a panel. In the case of a Muse, to get at the back behind by, by the tube, you need uh, an Allen key to remove three screws. Uh, we might want a Sharpie and some lens wipes. If we're going to check the alignment, we're also going to need some thermal paper uh, to stick on our optics uh, to make sure everything's aligned. Uh, some alcohol. This is isopropyl alcohol, 99.9%. Uh, it's pretty high strength stuff. Uh, you can use that on the optics or you can just use the lens wipes if you want. Uh, some paper towel to clean off miscellaneous things and maybe some microfiber cloth to get at things that are a little dusty. And if you want to check the rails, uh, all the sliding components, you may want some liquid wrench as well. And uh, to get at a couple, there's a couple of real corners sometimes in lasers in the case of a Muse, uh, right at the end of the, the tube itself. There's a couple of spots that are really hard to get to, so we'll probably want a couple of Q-tips. Uh, and we can use it in conjunction with the alcohol. So, so there we go. Uh, in addition to this, the only other thing we'll need is uh, a vacuum cleaner. Uh, I have my shop vac here. And if we're changing the coolant, the water in the system, we'll also clearly need some distilled water. And since winter time's coming, we'll need some, uh, some kind of antifreeze. I use propylene glycol just because it's not uh, too environmentally hazardous or too hazardous to people. So uh, that's it. We can get going now. All right. So step one I'm going to do is uh, to get at the tube and clean the back part of the laser and the fan. And we can even go in behind after and grab the, the exhaust vent and clean that as well. But so what I have to do first is, at least on a Muse, is remove a couple of screws here so I can get at the, f at the tube. Okay. Pop that out. And you can see dirt, a lot of dirt builds up. The initial vent uh, exhaust fan is back there. So I'm gonna clean this area up first. To do that, I'll, I'll initially vacuum this piece, but I'll start with uh, just clean the tube off. It's not really necessary, but uh, it's just nice to keep it clean. And I'll also take a cotton swab with a bit of alcohol and get in on the end to clean the optic on the front of the laser.
Okay, so now we'll just take a cotton swab and you may have to either cut it off or I use these paper ones, paper cotton swabs. So you can just squirt a little alcohol on it and just get it in there. It's in quite a ways, so you have to And you can see there's quite a bit of dirt. And then take the other end of the cotton swab and just dry it off so that that doesn't just re-solidify. And I'm certainly not rubbing hard, I'm just kind of swabbing it around in a, in a circle there. So that's the kind of tube area. The fan, you can see it's a little dusty. I might take it off on the other side and vacuum it out a bit. But other than that, it's a good time to inspect wires and the tube and make sure the tube is still good and solid, no, no damage. You can see there's a bit of the tubes, the water tubes get a bit yellow over time, but I will change the water here as well because it's winter's coming. So I'll put in some, some antifreeze as well. So that's the, that's the tube area. So step two in this process is we'll take the workspace out and you can clean that too if you want just maybe a little soap and water uh, but you can see down on the bottom all the bits and pieces that uh, collect anything that's small enough to fit through the honeycomb will end up down there so let me vacuum that out Okay, so workspace is nice and clean. I left a couple of pieces in here. Let me get those. And again, we can take a bit of paper towel and, and just give it a bit of a rub with maybe a bit of alcohol. So we can put the workspace back in. I won't bother cleaning that, at least not for now. Get it back in here out of the way. There we go, workspace is clean. The one last thing I'm gonna do is just clean all the optics. And we'll start, I usually start from the laser output end or the beam output. And I just use standard lens or lens cleaning cloths. They're, they're a bit damp. And my lens is looking nice and clean here. I clean them quite regularly, so. And we'll reach up underneath here. You gotta be careful not to move the, the mirror, so I'm really just lightly touching these. And same on mirror two. And again, on a muse, you have to hunt around a bit to find it, but it's there. And my optics are nice and clean here. It's cleaner than I, I thought it would be because I was doing a lot of cutting recently around with kind of dirty wood materials. Okay, so there we go. Optics are cleaned. The laser's nice and clean. Since we're still inside the laser here, there's one more thing that you can check, which is all of the the sliding elements. So the the linear rail on top and the and the sliders on the bottom. And you generally don't have to do anything with those specifically, but if you feel like they're a little dry, maybe uh, these ones aren't. But normally what I use is just a bit of white lithium grease. Now, this is a spray, so you don't want to be spraying it inside your laser. It goes everywhere. So what I would generally do is spray it on a, on a cloth first, away from the laser, and it's just like a kind of a white pasty, pasty bit here. So move the laser, just put a bit on the, on the rail and give it a bit of a rub. And any of the excess will come off. You'll see it collecting on the end there. And that'll keep the, all the sliding parts moving nice and smooth. So you can do that all around. Uh, 
The center one is the rail is a bit hard to get to, but if you move the head around, you can just put some material there. Watch you don't get it on the belt, and uh, and really that's all you have to do. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is drain my water supply and replace it. Uh, winter's coming, so I want to put a bit of antifreeze in it. Uh, just in case my shop freezes. It doesn't normally, but it might. Uh, so what I want to do is unplug the power so that there's nothing running, no power running, the pump's not running. And water into here is water that's come out of the pump, gone through the laser and come back. So what I want to do is disconnect that one. And you can just pull it. And I have my trusty pail right beside me here. And once I pull that, pull that line out, I can turn the pump back on and you'll see it's going to drain all the water out of it. It doesn't have to be perfectly drained, but the water you should replace it every month or two. Uh, it's a very uh, happy environment for uh, algae to grow uh, with the laser light plus just water that's warm all the time and you'll notice it holds a surprising amount of water. So there's the pump is empty and we don't want to run it too long dry. So once that is done, we can plug this back in. We can empty this out. This is just straight water, so I can empty it anywhere. We'll replace it and when I replace it, I'll mix a bit of uh, antifreeze into it. The antifreeze I use is propylene glycol, which is generally environmentally safe. It's actually a food used in the food industry as well. So it's not hazardous to you or anybody else really. And uh, let me just get some, some new water. So I'm ready to start refilling. So I have my propylene glycol and you can see from last year when I had it in my laser, I used about half the bottle. Uh, I won't probably put that much in this time, but uh, anywhere from 20 to 50% max, don't go over 50-50, uh, propylene glycol and water. Uh, where I live, it doesn't get really cold, so I don't really need that much. Uh, and my shop is warm all the time. So I normally put the, the glycol in first. So just pour a bit in. Probably about half of what I had left in this bottle. And then the rest is just straight water, distilled water. Make sure you're using distilled water. Turn on the pump again, and it will pump a bunch of that water down. And then we'll just top it up. So the last thing you want to do is run it, run it for a while. And then just look in the laser for air bubbles. Make sure there's no air bubbles in there. So anyway, we'll call that uh, we'll call that clean, and we're ready to go. So that's just a quick look at what I do to keep my laser uh, in good working order. Uh, as you can see, I clean it on a regular basis. I tend to be pretty thorough. I kind of cut a few corners for this video. Uh, one of the things I also do normally is I pull the, the vent pipe and I sh shove a vacuum uh, hose in it, keep it clean. I also clean the internal fan, exhaust fan, and my external inline fan. So, you know, keep those things in working order as well because if they stop working, then your laser is going to get overheated or full of smoke and it'll just get worse. So, uh, with that, hopefully, you got something out of this video. And uh, as always, uh, you can learn more. I'll, I, I'll put a video up here. Uh, and if you uh, are interested, go watch that and I'll see you over there. Otherwise, go make your world and I'll see you next time.